I've been doing my own research and it's just lucky that I've, you know, got the white fella paperwork so I, I can get independent research. But in terms of, um, I've been talking to World Health about our concerns and one of the things I've learned working internationally is, is that the health implications of, of people in or near mining sites or um, detonation sites or what happened at Chernobyl and I didn't know they do it everywhere you know like there's not there's practically not a, not a country that hasn't had a bomb or a mine of some kind dealing with this substance and the health implications are really bad and I'm saying because they're not talking about the bombs and the intergenerational side effects and um, for me, I, I, I've publicly talked about um, having three ovaries. We have people with extra digits. We have a lot of um, illnesses that I believe are, are ge genetically linked and it's intergenerational. They said, you know, they don't know how many generations it will affect. Um, we do have a lot of women with, with reproductive issues and it's difficult when you don't normally historically talk about it. So I guess that's why it just didn't come up. It's, it's very complex. It's very personal. It actually takes um, a lot of energy to give a part of yourself away, especially if you're damaged. Um, but um, in my immediate family, and this is really hard stuff, when we're talking about our, you know, little sisters, kids, our sons, things that happen to our families. We've got a lot of the um, testimonies that we have been writing, but we haven't put in uh, a proper health publication because there's a lot of reasons why. And this is really delicate stuff and it's just another part of the onslaught and a part of the process that, that happens when you're under genocide conditions because you have to keep talking about the historical hurt and the historical pain. But my, my sister's here and her son, and she said, is that okay, Jen? I say, yeah, we've, um, Jen's been battling with uh, Vernon and um, he's had the largest brain cancer in the world removed. Um, his MRIs are now clear after seven years, is it? I'm a nurse educator as part of my area and I've had to look at uh, thyroid conditions above the norm, cancer clusters. Um, it's across the board and, and, I, and I always say to people, and I think this is why we've got strength here at, at AMFA, that we're uh, Aboriginal and, and non-Aboriginal people with um, a shared vision because that's what it's about because when you're under a nuclear bomb or when you inhale one speck of plutonium it doesn't discriminate. You know since the Maralinga bomb I don't think anybody ever heard of cancer. I don't think it, it's affected Aboriginal people or non-Aboriginal people. But now, it's cancer, cancer, cancer. Now, myself, I don't have a thyroid. I don't have any thyroid glands because that was removed a few years ago and it was cancerous. And I was born when the Marilinga bomb went off. And there's a lot of non-Indigenous people that I know of that didn't even drink, smoke, do anything wrong in their lives, died of cancer. And it's, that word has come out really strongly now since uranium mining and atomic testing, all the evils, man's greed has stepped in. And uh, my issue with the uranium mining, which the government has allowed for the mining company to use all our, all our water. And um, it's been making our people sick. And there's no water there anymore. I think in relation to the water, I was talking to someone before and we were 
musing on the fact that every meeting we've been at, something is telling us about water. Because something has always happened at those meetings to do with water. Now, as Aboriginal people, we know we're going to pick up on the signs, for God's sake. The signs telling us we need to talk about water. But I, I think the pastorists need to be brought on board too and really, really take a good look at what's happening to the underground water supply that they pump up to water their stock. And it's not only in this country, out in the Mutna country, Noona country, it's in Gugula country too. Um, because just the Ambrosia have got a mine over there and they they got to get water from somewhere. And it's dry land on the edge of the Nullarbor, very, very dry land. And they're going to rape and pillage the water that's under, the little bit of water that's under the ground there and eventually destroy it. They really don't care where they're going to go so long as they get that desal plant for BHP Billiton. So they're dragging the whole lot of a lot of us in, and I'm proud of the Waiala people for sticking up for their rights, even because they've got cuttlefish there. But we've got a lot of stuff too. We've got the southern right whales coming through, um, and they intend to go straight through the middle of our country at the back, up through Woomera, and straight into Roxby from there. So, if anybody wants to have a look at this little map drawn on our be on our behalf that we had nothing to do with, um, they're welcome to. So um, between us all, let's all hope that we can stop them from going wherever they think they want to go. They've already, uh, my Luke has already got the okay to send mineral sands out from our local port of Thevenard and use the same wheat belt, the same belt that transports our wheat and salt and gypsum. And um, we don't know the impact yet. They said they'll clean the belt every, after every use or before the wheat needs to be sent off but that would probably mean they're going to run it straight into the ocean. But the, the damaging part of this is is what Aunty Sue uh, there was talking about, all the water, see? We've got our sacred springs, which help open up the, the very opening up of Australia, and um, they're all being drained dry as we speak, see? So, I don't know what we can do, but... but They've got water now coming up from the ocean now, see, so... Um, well, I just wanted to point that out, see, and... Every time I go to clearances and that, we're just, you know, driving around in four-wheel drives and saying, right, oh, we're marking out a big block. Use fellas, go there and drill and find out what you're going to find and stuff. So, you know, if... If this is going to be happening on your country, I try and, you know, maybe stop him or pull him up there first, eh? make them accountable as, as well. And water is our main resource. And that's what I wanted to speak about, the water that people is, rely on. And I remember once I was talking to Reggie Dodd and there was this uh, flowing board just out from Mari and he was going to take me and you turn the big tap on and the water squirts out from here to that red motor car. You can turn the tap on now and it just dribbles out because Roxby Down has drained all the underground stream. And what's going to come behind that? Anybody knows? There must be something behind it that will come along and poison everything. That's what's behind it. That's what I see behind it. Because when the water's gone, what is the rubbish going to come behind and poison everything around about us? The Mungus, the Euro and the Kangaroos are gone blind. Why? And some of those animals, like one of the ladies said before, that, uh, you know, the animals, she wouldn't want her children to have those animals because they, you know, might get sickness. Up there at Beverly, we've got birds with sores, we've got animals with big blisters. Then I, I asked the national parks if they could help us to get some autopsy done on these animals. And you know what the answer was? Geraldine, your son's a vet. You go and get him to go and do the 
um, autopsy on those uh, birds, uh, birds and animals. But then when I did go and see David, and he said, well, Mum, I could do it, but it's going to cost a lot of money. I've got to send it away to get it all science to have a look at it, why these plants are dying. But that's, you know, that's what Michael Turner was saying before, that, yes, I know I've seen these animals with sores. I've seen these animals gone blind. There's no water in our springs up there. There's no water for our animals to drink even. So, I'm not picking on you, David, but you'll be my friend still. <laughs> it's sort of a devastating for us. Because in those days, we used to go out and eat and hunt. And have, we used to be proud. Now we're just sort of living on white people's food and some of us are getting sick especially kidney you know with kidneys it's really hard and I just wonder every time I you know when I do go across sometimes to the families and it's really hard sometimes embarrassing for me to ask but it's then again I sort of explain to the families you know it's really hard now all this mining and uranium, you know, mining's going on and whether to eat or our own food, it's really hard and that's, that's why this government of ours, so-called government of ours, is, it's all invaded, invasion into our country, that's what I call invasion really, and I always have been and from the start and it's invading, well, we used to hunt now that I, I don't go out hunting, which is really sad, and my own grandkids ask me, and it's really sad, and deep in my heart I feel so sad, you know, I could go out and take my grandkids or whoever, or my sons or families. It's too, it's like a um, frightening, a fear, you know. Oh, don't shoot at us. Sometimes I tell my sons, you know, don't shoot. I said, why, why, why? I just... It's so hard to explain to little kids, but how can we trust and eat our own food from our own homeland, our own country? It is true that we still live off the land. We still go from waterhole to waterhole. And that's what, you know, a lot of Aboriginal people are having fear of, is what foods are we going to eat tomorrow? What kind of poison we're going to get sick from, especially when eating um, animals. The mine before, our people never roamed in that area, because the land itself and the word there is called Yuleri. The land itself is no man's land, no one, none of our tribal people, not even the next door neighbours um, don't go into there because they know the word, the meaning of that word is really death in that land. So um, they're going to open this death up to us. So I'd suggest for you ladies over there, for me, I'm only just one person speaking on my behalf, is for you, don't let anybody walk over you. Keep fighting for your rights um, to stop the uranium. And the best place for that to be kept is in the ground. <laughs>